What's going on, guys? Welcome back to 100% Chelsea and welcome to another live review of the game or of, of any game, to be honest, because we don't do these very often. But when we do do them, we enjoy ourselves. And there, there's more than one of us today doing them. Obviously, normally it's me just hopping on the lives and, and chatting shit for an hour. However, I'm joined by another man who likes to talk as much as I do, Mr. Dominic Rosso. Uh, Hello, you, Which means I couldn't actually go to the game today. <laughs> uh, but he's enjoying his Christmas. I hope you all have as well. Merry Christmas. Obviously, I didn't get to say that yesterday. I was going to do a Christmas address, but uh, like the, unlike the Queen, I don't have a gold piano. And uh, to be honest, you know, I, I was I was enjoying my turkey too much. So as you can see, I need to maintain this figure. But we'll get straight into it. Obviously, Boxing Day football has been in full flow today, and it has been a very good day to be honest. I mean, if you've looked at the scores, there's been a couple of fantastic uh, games. Uh, you know, looking at Liverpool, obviously putting five past. Was it five they put far, put past? I know uh, Spurs yes, did. five in the end. They put five past Spurs, put five five past, and so did Everton, I believe. So, uh, yeah, it's, a, uh, it's been a very good game of football. A uh, very good, well, from actually everyone who wants to watch match of the day. So, obviously, as I said, already joined by Dom. How was your Christmas, mate? Was it good? Yeah, we've had a really good Christmas. It was a bit different to last year. Last year I was in Australia, so this year it was nice and quiet with the family. Uh, we've had a few good days. Uh, and, yeah, a lot of football today. We've watched games mm -hmm. from about 12 o'clock onwards uh, to about half an hour ago for the final whistle to Chelsea. So, yeah, it's been a good Christmas. How was yours, buddy? It, it was good. I, I literally did the same. I spent Christmas in Australia as well a couple of times. It is good, but it's not quite home. Uh, so it's, it's uh, too warm. It's too yeah. Like it's a bit like mm, you're so. It's, used lov to it's, being it's, cold. It, it, it's lovely being able to sit on the beach on Christmas Day, but actually, it's quite nice sitting in front of fire watching Boxing Day football. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I found a new ritual for Christmases anyway. Uh, so it's either gonna be Christmas Day or Boxing Day because it's Boxing Day. We have the football as well. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch Cool Runnings every single Christmas. I, I, oh, Dom's gone. He's still there. Yeah. Hello. You think your signal went? So yeah. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Kiss, kiss your lucky egg, and you're and you're and you're and you're fine. Actually, it was quite nice not to have any work. It was. It was. I mean, to be to be honest, it's a it's, 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 yeah. It's a case of you know we, Scott could make it, you could make it. So it was kind of a case for me. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. a way for me to get out of it per se, but I was kind of there. No, not like, at all. Do you know what? I, if we do, if like we always say, if we do content, we do it properly. And yep. um, unfortunately, that we wouldn't have been able to do it as well as we could have done. Obviously, Lewis was at the game. Uh, yep. Jack was, Ian was. So I mean, they might be doing some stuff for us. Uh, who knows? But you know, it's kind of it's kind of left it free today. It's boxing. And, that, and actually, it allowed you yeah. to sit down and enjoy the game because when we go to games, whilst yes, you get to watch the ninety minutes, but actually, it it consists of a good two, three, four hours work afterwards. So actually, be able to sit down with a couple of drinks and not have to worry about the the yeah. post match spiel. Yeah, well, I, I actually got uh, so I had some more family guys. I got a really nice present. I put it in our group chat, didn't I? That emoji mug. I enjoyed a hot chocolate out of it. So uh, I was uh, very happy yeah. with my with my, pro my presence today. And I, I haven't been drinking that heavily this Christmas, but yeah. we'll get into it. Listen, <laughs> Watford 1, Chelsea 2. Um, interesting game of football. First points we want to raise, obviously, is it was exactly the same team uh, that's been going for the last four games. Four games. Um, and obviously a lot of people were... Were, were annoyed by the fact that it wasn't a um, <laughs> well obviously it was an unchanged side from that Leicester defeat and I, 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 to be honest the race point this is the same team that beat Manchester City what's going on why does the mentality continually change I, I think we're going I think as I said a few weeks ago on one of my fan cams uh, I hope it doesn't turn into a game where uh, results against the smaller sides with no disrespect to uh, Watford define uh, and uh, Leicester sorry define our season Leicester for, uh, fair play to them they've actually uh, firstly across Man City and then against Chelsea but I just feel that Chelsea need to bring something in terms of consistency uh, and that's something that we haven't really seen this season uh, earlier in the season we went to Liverpool and uh, beat them 2-1 in the League Cup fair enough um but then we go the weekend after and we draw against uh, West Ham. And I feel that the consistency is something that is lacking for mm. Maurizio Sarri's side at the moment. I, I agree. I, I think it's something which we, we really need to develop on and work on. It, for me, I, like I said last week, our shades of 13, 14. You know, we're missing yes. the key comp components to really push on. Uh, yeah. Obviously, like, last, week, last week, a lot of people thought was going mad that you know, Sarri wasn't working and all that type of stuff. And to, to be honest, I understand the, the, the thought process. Yep. However, at the same time, we have to remember this guy doesn't have all the tools he needs 
Uh, and January is going to be so keen that. But we'll get onto that shortly. Obviously, there's two things we really want to talk about in this game. The major points being Eden Hazard, obviously, uh, and Callum Hudson and I think we'll talk about Hudson and first. Uh, obviously, go and put the negative in the middle, put a positive at the back end of it. Um, yeah. Hudson Odoi obviously going off or coming on and then going off again. Uh, basically, having looked at Twitter, having looked at Sky Sports and Chelsea, Chelsea come out with an official statement saying that, um, uh, if, I could, if I can get it up here, one moment. Here you go, Twitter. Hello. All right. Twitter set. So Chelsea's official statement. Oh, where is it? I literally had it up in front of me. Uh, or this evening. This evening, yeah. It's here. I've just got it here. Here we go. Okay. Uh, sorry, says Callum hudson has had the hamstring issue last week, which flared up in the last 10 minutes. Fine. And he left, felt a little pain, which is why he came off. Okay. Uh, also, that's all for the boss now. Uh, obviously, you can go ahead across to the app, which uh, decides to take it out on fan channels uh, if you really want to. Um, yeah. I'd say to say, I don't think I'm going to be heading across there anytime soon. Uh, but, uh, look, I think, you know, first we want to address that. Obviously, Callum hudson uh, I put a tweet out earlier saying, you know, Pedro's come off. He has to seize this opportunity. Uh, and to be honest, he was quiet during the game. He didn't really do anything. He was. But he he kind of... I, I'm not, I wasn't expecting him to be explosive and score five million goals and get ten assists in the game. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's one of those where I feel like some people would would have expected else uh, someone else. But, you know, I think he, he, he did what he needed to do. Yeah. Uh, Lewis is in the stream. That's why I like, mate. Uh, we would say get on, but you're at the ground. But if you're not, text us and we'll send you the link. Um, but, I mean, at the same time, it's kind of a case of, you know, I thought he, he did make those direct runs. He did draw people towards him, which might open up space for others. And that's kind of how the goal was created for as our I, first one. I think with Callum hudson Doy at the moment, it's about game time and it's about building his experience. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, he's gone on loan to Palace last season. He's had a little bit more uh, experience. He's a bigger boy. He's got that explosive power, which is fantastic for the um, institution. Uh, with Callum hudson Doy, obviously, we're not expecting him to have such a, a grave impact. I thought he played well tonight. Uh, he made some darting runs. So he, made, he created some link-up uh, pieces of play. Uh, obviously, it's worrying he's gone off in the 84th, 85th minute with that um, hamstring tweak. So we hope it's nothing too serious. But I thought he did well. He did uh, what was required. Uh, I'd like a little bit of an explanation as to why Ruben Loftus-Cheek wasn't uh, featured in the bench, uh, on the bench. Uh, I didn't see too much regarding injury news rega- uh, about him. And I thought actually tonight would have been a perfect game for him to have played. It was a 7.30 kickoff on Boxing Day, so it's not the most, you weren't expecting the most clean and fresh game of football. It was scrappy at times, and I thought Ruben Loftus-Cheek would have thrived in those uh, conditions. Mm, I, I agree. I think I think the Ross Barkley substitution kind of made sense, but the one yeah, thing I, I agree. say about Ross Barkley, um, it's him and Ruben Loftus-Cheek always vying for that position on the bench. He can be very careless in possession. Uh, it was notable during his times at Everton. It's been notable more recently. He has got better while he's been at Chelsea, obviously, under a possession-based manager. But at the same time, it's kind of, for me, I, I still don't think, if I had, if we had to offload one, which is what it's going to have to be, yeah. um, you know, I think it's just the case that I would rather offload Ross, um, Ross Barkley rather than Ruben off his cheek. Um, he, he was good today, Barkley, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it just wasn't, anything special he didn't really add the impetus which he, he normally he brings uh to to a team or when we bring him on um but i mean obviously leave your thoughts down in the comment section about that about ross barkley rim loss cheek uh, and obviously callum hudson are doing this injury i also season. think just be- just before we move on buddy uh, i think the the one draw that maritza sorry is starting to experiment with ruben loftus cheek is actually playing him in a more forwards position mm. uh we saw against oh, i think Brighton, he actually uh, played a lot of the game in that forward three. And then mm. when Eden Hazard uh, came on, he sat back into the uh, midfield three, actually having the versatile uh, player such as Ruben Loftus Cheek in comparison to Ross Barkley might be something that Chelsea will be looking forward to uh, as we move forwards. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's definitely someone else. Obviously, do you think he should be someone that contends for that spot? Also, obviously, as well as Ruben Loftus-Cheek vying for that other position in the front three, as you just mentioned, Dom. Yeah. Will this injury be another big setback for Callum Hudson Odoi's potential Chelsea career? Obviously, for me talking about more in depth about that, I can do a video. But I have done a thread on Twitter recently where I kind of just went in depth and had a chat about everything. So if you want to go check that out, make sure you head across to my personal. Um, but we'll move on to the biggest news for us today regarding well, regarding the result. Uh, Eden Hazard. 
Uh, 101 goals in, well, 101 goals for Chelsea, making him the 10th player to do so. Uh, I'll go through the list quickly. Just ahead of him in ninth, you've got George Hilton, you've got George Mills, you have Jimmy Greaves. If you don't know who Jimmy Greaves is, go do your research. And also, for the Tottenham fans that may be watching, uh, you have a picture of him in a Chelsea shirt on one of the T-shirts you sell in your club shop. So that says a lot about your club. But also ahead of uh, George Mills, you've obviously got the great, the King of Stamford Bridge, Peter Osgood. Uh, you've got Roy Bentley, the 1955 uh, league winning captain, uh, the centre forward for Chelsea. Uh, Didier Drogba ahead of him. Terry Dixon, another player for the younger people to have a chat look, and look about. Uh, Bobby Tabling as well, who mm. was then obviously taken over by Frank Lampard, who scored 211 goals for Chelsea. Obviously, Hazard joining quite a prestigious group of players there. Um, you know, also this season, 10 goals, 11 assists, the most involvement in the Premier League, 51%. Listen, that's been absolutely a standard performance. Like, obviously, he then went for a hat trick at the end of the game, which he didn't quite get. Um, what were your thoughts on him today, Dom? It was a good save from Ben Foster at the end. Yeah, I thought um, Eden Hazard was superb. Um, and actually, he is now starting to turn out more fantastic performances than uh, not so fantastic performances. And actually, he's made the step up compared to three was having good games and some superb games. However, the large number of them weren't so uh, gripping. However, now he's really taken the ball by the horns and yeah. uh, he's really starting to turn the Premier League into his uh, garden and to, into his competition. I thought it was superb tonight. Um, the first goal uh, it, it distra- displayed a lot of uh, prowess and a lot of uh, attacking uh, mindset. I thought he was also unfortunate not to get uh, another one. Uh, and then the penalty as calm as you like. Um, yeah. It was very similar as to what we saw in the FA Cup final. Very calm, uh, sends the keeper into the wrong direction. And yeah, it was again, it was what you expect from a world-class player, which I think Eden Hazard is uh, turning out to be. The only uh, negative I've got is I'm still not convinced about this uh, false nine uh, attacking. Uh, mm. for, I, I still think Chelsea need someone to front up other tackles. Yes, getting very fluid p- pieces of play yeah. with uh, Pedro, Hazard and Willian. I'm just not sure if it's going to be able to take Chelsea to the next level and to be able to compete with the likes of City, Liverpool, mm. Tottenham on a regular basis. Well, this, this is something I completely agree with. We are lacking the clinical centre forward and it became evident when we were kind of having bodies lacking to get into the box. Um you know, Olivier Giroud is a great option. Obviously, Alvaro Mata was left out of the team again, despite being injury-free, apparently, saying a lot about what potentially could be happening. Obviously, there's been the talk of the Gonzalo Higuain transfer, something which I'm personally not a fan of. Uh, the guy hasn't scored in seven games. Uh, it's not, it's seven, not scored in seven games, 32-year-old centre-forward. We might be taking over his own. If it's a loan, fair enough. Um, you know, he might bang a few in. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's just a redundant transfer, in my opinion. I'd rather go for something a bit longer term. I've always liked Lautaro Martinez, um, the one that was at, in Argentina then moved to Inter. I don't really know what he's done because I haven't really kept an eye on him uh, since he moved there. But, you know, I think, you know, we, we need a longer term transfer target and I think, I'm, I agree with Charles Nine, but again, at the same time, we've already mentioned this has been the same team um, that played in four games, we've played, it's been played for four games. Eden Hazard has led the line in all four of them yeah. and he has delivered you know, I think if we look at it, it's a four games. I agree. And we can hardly complain because we've won three out of the last uh, four games. Yeah. However, I just don't think... Actually, it's terms of um, repetitive goal scoring, which whilst Chelsea have scored their fair number of goals uh, in the last four games, a fair number of them have been from set pieces, so penalties uh, and free kicks and... Uh, yeah. Corners. I just feel that actually, in terms of taking our chances, we're not going to, particularly when uh, the European competitions kick back in. Like our January is incredibly busy. Mm. Like yeah, I, agree. No, I agree. And I just don't feel that we're actually going to be able to do that on a repeated mm. basis without having someone to lead the line. Mm. Then yeah, no, I agree. We, we definitely need to have a bit of rotation in the squad. I mean, I, I don't know who a realistic option is for us to go for in January. Obviously, a lot of talk about Callum Wilson, Gonzalo Higuain, as we've already mentioned. Yeah. I am not convinced by either of those options. Callum Wilson's the one I'd go for for a longer term option to maybe become that second choice centre forward um, in the next few years. Obviously, he's 26, 27 years old. Uh, can be a lot of money made for him. Obviously, he comes to Chelsea. That's the main thing we can think about. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, we can also look forward. Obviously, there's that English quote. There's, there was a talk about that potentially happening post Brexit. Obviously, that have, that's actioned uh, this well this coming year. Yeah. Um, so this could mean me. I could think. I think for just in terms of a business sense, it, it may work. In terms of footballing sense, he's a proven centre league, uh, Premier League centre forward. Uh, he really, you know, he does know where the net is. And you know, with the if he had better options than he does have a. Um, at Bournemouth, sorry, all due respect. You know, obviously, you know, you have Josh King, you have this Brooks guy who's made a massive appearance uh, since arrived from Sheffield Wednesday in the summer. You know, I feel that he could have the capacity to score a lot more goals for us and could fill that centre forward role that we need. People I laughing think- at me in the comments, I don't really care. Do your research. Uh, just because he plays for Bournemouth, who sign players from smaller clubs as well. And if you're going to please that mentality, you're an idiot, quite frankly. I think it'd also be the next step up for him in his career, which I think he really needs because actually he is at times a really quality uh, player. But um, and it's something that Chelsea need to get. It's, he's very dogged. He's very um, focused. And actually, it's something Chelsea need. Somebody a little bit ha- have a little something about them that we've we've had a lot of strikers in the last ten years. We've had uh, Drogba, Torres, Etu, Diego Costa. Abara Morata, and that's just to name a couple of them. And actually, the ones who have really stuck in the mind are the ones who actually just get their heads down and just play for it. Yeah, um, I, I agree. And I, I think you should bring that to the Chelsea side. Yeah, and, and to be honest, you know, we we need those type of players in our team. We need to, we need to have people that just do the dog work. And every club needs them. You've seen how how important it is for Liverpool. You know, players that do dog work. That midfield is dog work. In our in us, you know, in in, in, in if, you, if you were to put it onto a football pitch, if you take the, yeah. if you open the book and someone does it, puts up the phrase "dog work" in a dictionary, you'd find that Liverpool team. You'd find James Milner. You'd find so many players. Fernandinho. You know, for a proper side to win stuff, you need people that do that. Kante does a dog work for us in midfield. We just need someone who's going to press high up the pitch, which is what we seem to do when we don't have the ball. I don't think we did it as well as we could without the ball. Um, sorry, we, I don't think we did it as well as we could have done. Um, you know, I think. It's kind of a case of, you know, do do we take do we take someone like Callum Wilson who can push higher up the pitch? Uh, do we really? I mean, to be honest, someone in the comment section here said Thomas uh, Thomas Pizzani, Louis Callum Wilson has missed more chances than Morata. Lol, you don't want him. Uh, he's also scored more goals than him. So to be honest, I'd rather take someone who actually scores uh, and finds the back of the net rather than somebody who just misses continuously and doesn't find the back of the net. I mean, people were talking. We always said this season we want Morata to push on. Unfortunately, can't do it. And Sarri's realised that we need to have someone else who can lead the line. Uh, he really wants to play. I understand why he may want Higuain as someone who he's already worked with, obviously already scored um, consistent goals for Saudi for Napoli uh, in the city. Obviously, got that goal scoring record. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can. We'll, we'll, we'll move on from that. I don't think. Uh, sorry, just before we move on, I don't think uh, Higuain is going to be the answer to Chelsea's issues. I think he's going to come. He may come in and have an immediate impact, and yes, he might be. He might do well for Chelsea for six or so months. But I really think Chelsea need to be looking and investing in the long term game, uh, and that's something which I feel that Chelsea sides haven't done so well in the last five or six years. That Mourinho set our team up in 2005-2006 to last for a good few more years. Um, but I feel that Chelsea haven't done that. I think really clear the fact 2014 we went from first place the year before to 10th. Last se- uh, the, um, the season before last, we went from first place and we dominated that year, John Terry's final year, and then we finished fifth last year. And I think actually Chelsea need to be looking to try and build a side, not just a team, but actually to build a squad that can actually compete on a regular basis. Well, you've, you've seen it with Man City. You've seen If you just look at the front line, Sane, Gabriel Jesus, um, Sterling obviously is another player. You've got De Bruyne who's, in his, who's just about to hit his prime. I think the only positions you can really say aren't built for longevity our oh, central midfield. I mean, other than De Bruyne, David Silva, Fernandinho, both over 30. But if you look at that back line as well, this is a team to build to go forward. And I think this, this is something, again, I mentioned that Twitter thread, something I've mentioned. Chelsea as a club, their philosophy is win trophies. It's as simple as that. And don't get me wrong, I, I think yeah. that's a superb philosophy to have. I love trophies. Don't get me wrong. I love it. See, I've got one there. That, that, was, some, that was a trophy I won. I've got another one here. Look, they're beautiful things. But... At the end of the day, you need to you need to think about what we need to to do for the long term. You need it's those little nuggets of success. I was saying as you know, if you look at the bigger picture, those little nuggets create a DNA, a philosophy, and something which can take us forward. And if you look at the team we had, 
you could say there was a philosophy. If you look at that spine, it was hard work, dedication to the cause, and don't stop. That was the mentality that team had. It was. took it forward, and that was the spine. Uh, and that, to be honest, if, if we need to change that mentality to beautiful football suits all, then yeah. But the issue is we need to then look at Maric Sarri. If you look at other clubs, long-term deals for all their managers. You look at uh, Jurgen Klopp. You look at Unai Emery. You look at Pep Guardiola. And before Pep Guardiola even arrived at City, it was a long-term project to have him in the fold at some point or another. Sadly, getting a three-year deal. And if he doesn't hit the ground running, doesn't get top four this year, will get sacked because that's how we operate. That's not long-term. That's just continuous changes. And I think that's the same thing affects our youth and affects Callum and doy It's affected if you go far back. I think for us, you look at uh, Josh McEachran was the first player, which I remember being, when I was younger, being tipped to come through. You know, he was getting minutes under Ancelotti. He, Ancelotti finishes second, couple of points off Manchester United, gets sacked. You know, it's kind of a case that there's not been a brand of, of football and a brand of management and a brand of philosophy which has been there long enough for us to really say, this is how chess football could play. This is our philosophy. You look at you look at you know, Man United, obviously you've got the Busby Babes, you've got Alex Ferguson, you look at Liverpool, you've got Paisley, you've got Shankly, you've got the famous Liverpool boot room. Uh, if you want to do some reading on that, go ahead. But, you know, it's kind of a case of this is what builds Liverpool. This is what builds Manchester United. This is what they have. And before people say it's just history, history does play a part. Shows yeah. you have history. I think also that in your what you've just put forward is a completely relevant argument and actually something which you said, which I think is really prominent in terms of Chelsea. Other clubs have and I think that what Chelsea are really lacking at the moment is some sort of direction and some sort of central basis. Uh, just looking at the comments uh, now, uh, I think actually some people have a genuine point in terms of we need a director of football yeah. because Chelsea currently, we currently give Maurizio Sarri the best players we can manage, but they're not necessarily his players. He can, yes, of course, give his influence and who he wants to sign, but when it comes to it, it's the board who actually uh, create the signings and make the signings happen. And I think unless you're going to give that power to the manager, he can't form and formulate the side that he really wants and he genuinely believes in. I, I, I agree. And I think, sorry, excuse me, I don't know what that was. <clears throat> um, I, I agree. I think the direct football would be what we need. I think <laughs> hindsight is a beautiful thing. And I think we can all agree that it wasn't Michael Amanalo that was the problem at Chelsea. Uh, I think the biggest issue is, uh, is Marina. I have someone asking, uh, was Kepa a Sarri signing? No, he actually wasn't. He was a Christoph Lolichon signing. Uh, and, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know it's, it's a case of he, you know, he puts forward who he thinks would be the good option to the board. And Kepa was on that list and has been for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, we, we are lacking direction. We are lacking a direction. But I think one of the big things I spoke about was, look, if you compare ourselves to United, Liverpool and City, United have the budget because of the calibre of the club they are. Yeah. Uh, they are the biggest club in the UK, without a doubt. If you look at, you know, in terms of sales and in terms of yeah. the brand itself, Manchester United right. are the biggest club. Some, some people say they're not relative in a footballing sense. They're not at the minute. They will be next year and the year after that and the year after that. You can see yeah. that team has enough quality to grind out a 3-1 because apparently they were dog shit today. But, you know, three goals. I mean, if they can do that grinding out, um, it's kind of a case of, you really need to be able to uh, basically do that and still perform well. Manchester United again, Liverpool, another club with a lot of calibre. Uh, obviously, they nearly went bankrupt and they've kind of been building up and that Virgil van Dijk signing showed what was to come from Liverpool Football Club and they've gone and done it again uh, in the summer, investing a lot of money, 70 million on Alisson, 75 million obviously on, as we said, on Virgil van Dijk and they built a spine, they built a team. I uh, think that's something that, that, that Jurgen Klopp's really started to implement. I, I was watching uh, Premier League years earlier today with my younger brother, mm. uh, and we watched t only two and a half years ago Christian Benteke scoring the winner against Leicester City. Mm. And it's the type, that, and now they've got one of the world's best uh, uh, front three in terms of goals and goal presence. Uh, I just think Liverpool have really taken that step up. And I think it's actually something Liverpool fans need to embrace because they're so much, uh, they're very focused in terms of, oh, we've got the history and we've got the, we, we build it up from the ground. They spent last season being at um, Oxlade Chamberlain, being at, uh, Virgil van Dijk and actually I think they need to uh, they need to actually accept they are now 
uh, starting to become very similar to the Chelsea's, the Man City's, the United's. Um, but actually, fair play to Jurgen Klopp. He's come in, been asked to do a job, and he's building a side which I can see challenging for the title. Well, I mean, we, we'll, we'll move on to that very shortly, but I think it's kind of a case of... Uh, I think I was listening to 606 the other day, yeah. and a guy raised a very good point, Chelsea fan, actually. Uh, he went on and he was saying, when are we going to start falling in love with beautiful people and start looking at people who get the results? I completely agree. Jurgen Klopp, this, this is fourth season now. The investment that Liverpool Football Club have made in him, oh, is it his fourth? No, it's, third, it's, 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 it's a third or fourth season. The investment that Liverpool Football Club have made in him, if he doesn't, look, they are currently in a position where they are way above everyone else at, at the top of the table. Six points clear, to be precise. Six points. They play Manchester City on the 3rd of January. Uh, they can go nine points clear even, or, or they can go even further clear as City. They're, I think they're about a good six points clear of them now, uh, seven points even. I think it's kind of a case of, you know, they, they need to really consider it. I mean, the last time they were this clear uh, was in 2001, 2002, and they finished fifth. Obviously, I don't think this Liverpool team are going to do the same. They, didn't, they went 11 games without a win. I sincerely doubt that will happen with them. I just think it's a case of we just need to... With Sadi, you can kind of see... If you're going to take that Liverpool model, let's take that 2016 Europa League final. Two of their back four players, which are nowhere near the side. No, three of them, actually. I think it was... Uh, no, it wasn't. Lovren was in the side then. But you had uh, four, three of the three of back four were, were John Flanagan, Carlo Torre, yeah. and Alberto Moreno. And goal, you had Simon Mignolet. You know, in mid, midfield, you had uh, Coutinho, you had Henderson, you had... Didn't, it wasn't Milner, it was somebody else. But then your front three also was Sturridge, Origi, and someone playing at left wing who's not there anymore. This team has come on leaps and bounds. And that's the, this, you can see what happens when someone gets given the budget and gets given the time to build a project. And I think it's kind of a case of that's what modern football is starting to do again. It's trying to go backwards to the, the older times where exciting football was what everyone wanted yeah. and it worked out much better. And you gave managers time to build a project. And I really think this is where we could be falling behind. I, I, I completely agree. And actually, I think it's also mostly focused on girls. The number of times that clean sheets are now kept, can sit, I was reading a stat on Sky, uh, Sky Sports News uh, the other day, uh, the number of clean sheets kept in the last year is considerably fewer than uh, 10 years ago. And that's because it has become a lot more free attacking football in the Premier League. And actually, I feel that if Chelsea are unable to keep up with that, we could be left behind. We mm. might not be just left behind by... The just want to be in that top six. I feel that Chelsea actually, say for example, we lose Eden Hazard in the January transfer window, which, in my personal opinion, maybe not in January, but in um, potentially next summer, if Real Madrid are not doing, if not they're not firing on all cylinders, the board from Real Madrid will not hold back. And if a world record bid comes in for Eden Hazard, Chelsea would be foolish not to take it. I can only see Chelsea as a mid-table side. Well. I'm going to address that point now about Eden Hazard, uh, and it may be me holding on for dear life, yeah. hoping that uh, it happens. I saw it on Eunice's Twitter earlier. Obviously, he's just uploaded as well, so if you want to head across to watch his video, please do so. Subscribe to his channel as well. Uh, also, please stay here and just kind of do it afterwards. That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> Subscribe here. All that lovely stuff. Um, but uh, Eden Hazard has said, I want to score more goals for this club and then try to be a legend like Lampard, Terry, or Drogba. That is him reflecting on the win today, obviously, after scoring 100 goals. Eunice pretty much sums it up. Get that man a pen now. I'm sorry, but, you know, if this guy wants to become a legend and really wants to do that, then give him the pen. See if he signs contract. If he doesn't sign the contract, then, you know, Selavie, he moves on. I think we have to be prepared for him to potentially be moving on for quite a long time now. Yeah. Uh, Don't plug in his laptop, so I'll carry on talking while he does that. But I think it's kind of a case of irrespective of what happens, irrespective of whether he moves on. If it might actually, if you take the look at the positives of that, if you look at how Spurs developed off of Gareth Bale, even, instead of having to rely on Gareth Bale, yes, if they did a shitty transfer window when they sold him, but you've seen how they developed. You know, they found a few gems in that photo, in those stats. Obviously, they brought in Christian Eriksen when they sold Gareth Bale. Fantastic purchase. Deli Ali, we've seen. Harry Kane, obviously, came to the UK. And it's about finding that balance between youth integration. And buying those you know, those marketable players, those big players that can can take you those steps further uh, in terms of transfer budget and in terms of just general class, um, I think is something which you need to really, really consider. And I feel that we are 
needing to uh, to sort that out. To be honest, um, it's 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 the nature of the beast, um, and I think it's kind of a case of we've been we've been talking about this. Eden Hazard wants to be one of those key players. If he wants to be one of those key players. Get him to sign the contract. Build a team around him. Let yeah. him have a say on what is going on at the club uh, in terms of who he wants to play with, who he feels the team could could use to, to develop. And, you know, you look at John Terry, you look at all these other players in the past, which they've not been massive voices, they've not been sitting there going, this is what needs to happen, otherwise I'm leaving. They've gone, look, this will improve the side. This will do this. This will do that. This is what I think happened. They pass out to the manager. This goes to the director of football. This then goes to the board. Oh, my God. When you look at that, there's actually some communication going on. Yeah. And you can see what every what everyone's saying what's going on and i think that would be something which would be good if he leaves yes it's a step backwards but sometimes you have to take one step back step two steps forward look at the bigger picture those little nuggets as i like to say um and it's kind of a case of you know that that could be uh the, the issue but uh yeah i mean is there anything you want to add to that i uh, i uh, uh... I think Hazard is that actually, whilst yes, it's fantastic to put a side around the man and he's a fantastic player, I think we'd be really putting all our eggs in one basket, uh, not to steal a Love Island uh, quote. Um, That's not a Love Island quote. They stole that off of somebody else who actually has a mm. sense of philosophy <laughs> and actually has brain cells. No offence, Josh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, look, I completely agree with you. I think Eden Hazard really needs to be the main focus at Chelsea for the foreseeable future um he doesn't seem like the kind of chap that uh, will be money driven however i feel that if a huge contract is put in front of him either by chelsea or by real madrid or any other club psg are are, are sniffing around uh, i've been reading i feel that uh, it'd be foolish uh, not to take it um i think that chelsea really need to pin him down and really need to tie him down uh, for the foreseeable future and yeah build a side around him because he is a wonderful player, but he needs the talent around him to really thrive because he wants, if as a footballer, he wants to be the best he ever can be. And I don't believe that with these current, this current Chelsea side, he can be, but with the Real Madrid side, with the, the, the likes of Marco Asensio, Isco um, and Gareth Bale, I feel that he really could become the best he could be. That's why Chelsea really need to stop fanning around and make, institutions which um sorry the the signings which are going to allow eden hazard to perform at the very best because he really shouldn't be coming to a watford game and struggling just to get two goals yeah the penalty fine but the foot he should be really be able to come and play this free attacking football and actually if chelsea are not giving him the support uh not just on the field but uh back behind the scenes he's got to be going where he's going to be given the best opportunities yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's 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 it's the logic. You got you got to look after number one. Unfortunately, you do. You do. Um, I mean, the fact you raised there again, the fifty-one percent stat. We are over a lot of hazard, uh, and I think that would be something which you know we have to consider our options about. A lot of people talking about Pulisic in the comment section. Uh, again, I'm going to address. Yeah. I, I, I think we. I'd like to talk a little bit about Christian Pulisic uh, as a player this season. Hasn't kicked on. He's a youngster. Uh, one, uh, two, that would only stop Hudson Odoi in his tracks, and Dortmund want Hudson Odoi. So if you look at that, it's not really going to work. The only and three, the biggest reason, and there's no doubt about it, as to why we would be signing Christian Pulisic is the corner of that American market. There is no yeah. doubt about it. He is the best US player out there right now. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's the best footballer. Uh, and if it's just a financial something for financial benefit, it's not the correct reason to be signing a player. End of. Uh, 70 million quid they were quoting as well. It's a ridiculous number. It's a ridiculous fees. Yeah. Um, but I think it's kind of a case of if we spring someone in, we do need a winger. Uh, Will and simply hasn't performed in two. He hit the post twice today and then missed an opportunity towards the end. Again, far too slow. Yes, he used to perform. Yes, he's been a fantastic servant for Chelsea. And there's no doubt about that. But the biggest issue to speak on about this is no point just saying, just play Hudson the doy. Look, it's not going to happen. It's as simple as that. And the main reason is because the manager is he, he, he needs results straight away to survive. Yeah. They don't have time for the project. I don't think Hudson Odoi, whilst yes, it's great for him to get game time, I don't think he's ready. Um, and actually, uh, I'm just looking down at a few of the, the comments. There is a suggestion for him. Uh, some people have suggested uh, that 
they think it might be best for him to go on loan. I don't think it would be necessarily the best thing for him to go on loan, but I think he does need to get a lot of experience. But again, as you just said, Mauricio Sarri needs to get results now. And I don't think having uh, Hudson is going to get him that. But you're almost in a, what do you do? You play this fantastic young player um, to get experience for him. But then if he's not going to bring you the results and the goals that you really need, do you sit him on the bench? Mm. It, yeah, it's, it, it's a difficult one, mate. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's, it, that's exactly what it is. It is just difficult. Um, and... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a circle. But to be honest, I do want to do a video on this. I do want to have a big discussion about it. Obviously, yeah. Don can get involved in that. How long will we be going for now? Uh, oh, we have been going for about half an hour. So I think what we'll do, is we'll, we'll call it there. Uh, let's see if we can get some comments in, guys. We'll, it's, we'll go until 10-2. So we've got five minutes. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, you know, we kind of analysed the game. Talked about, obviously, you know, Hazard getting 100 goals, 101 goals. Uh, obviously, 51% goal conversion. Why we needed to improve. We've spoken about Manchester City and Liverpool. We've spoken about why is it the same team against Leicester. Um, but, you know, I think, it's again, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how this team develops. Here goes my notebook because I don't need it anymore. <sighs> Look, guys, my hands. Right, let's go. Give us some comments. What have we got to talk about? Um, Kep apparently had another howler today. Mm. Oh, th there was the, there was the one instant in the uh, first half. I, I think realistically, Kepa's um, distribution is fantastic. There was the one instance in the uh, first half, which uh, he pretty much just gave it to the Watford player, and uh, I can't quite remember who it was. Um, and they were unfortunate to score. I, I, I disagree with that. I think Kepa actually he is a fantastic replacement for Big Nose. Um, don't say it. Don't even. Don't give him a nice nickname. Just call him cunt. It's much easier. No, you shall not be named. Just call you him know cunt. <laughs> there's, there's, there's two people on the on this planet. I'm called cunt, and both everyone on the streams knows who they are. Uh, Cortar, and then someone else. Uh, but actually, it's three. Maybe Domino's the other one. Um, but it's kind of a case of, you know, my dad's got. No, 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 that. Don't give it away. Uh, the, uh, put it this way: the the whole thing. Excuse me. Sorry. I, Christmas dinner. Uh, the, uh... <laughs> Did you hear that on the stream? Yeah. <laughs> that, is like that is shocking. That is shocking. Professionalism, eh? it's finest. Oh god. Uh, uh, don't tell me to lose some weight. You can't. Uh, irrespective, I can lose weight, but at the same time, uh, when you say you can't, you are what you eat, and uh, as a YouTuber. I get plenty, uh, but other than that, I think it's kind of a case of, you know, if we if we if we go through it, I don't think Courtois, um, Kepper, Kepper, Kepper was overrated. The big person I want to speak about is I want to speak about, uh, basically, I want to speak about David Luiz. Uh, if you want to talk about overrated, there's your man there. Oh, look at me! Look, I'm a great passer. Oh, a oh, beautiful play there. But turn his back. Uh, on the goal, and obviously that's one of the problems with zonal marking. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of a case of you know it's 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 he, he's not doing a job as a centre half. That's my opinion. Anyway, uh, make the tackles. That's a big thing. Yes, he made some Who's great. Who's this? Sorry, Luis. Oh, don't don't even get me started on David Luis. Love David Luis is mediocre for me. If someone said is he is he one of your first or centre half of the club, I'd go no. No, not at all. Yes, he's a great leader. There's no doubt about that. So is Gary Cahill, who's currently sat on the bench. So is John Terry when he sat on the bench. You can be a leader, but you don't necessarily need to be on the pitch. You need to have characters in the team. Doesn't necessarily mean being the starting eleven. I but, think my brother. I, th I think my brother uh, summed David Luiz up perfectly. He did another beautiful cross field ball straight out. Mm. One main reason why Maurizio Sarri has got him inside is because he can put a pass and he can do some superb uh, crosses of the ball. We saw the build, the uh, start of build up to the Kante goal against Man City a few weeks ago was a cross field ball uh, from David Luiz to uh, pen out on the right, uh, the right wing. Um, however, again, as I said against Tottenham, he is prone to mistakes, and every time he does get the ball. It, it, I get I get some sort of anxiety in my stomach just because I don't 
have six years ago against uh, QPR that he was the mastermind behind Chelsea's downfall that day. And I feel that whilst, yes, he does have some good games, I feel his performances on the whole aren't warranting a side that is uh, warranting a position in a side that is hopefully going to be challenging for Premier League trophies. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. But uh, listen, leave your thoughts on all that down in the comments section below. Listen, Hassan, uh, if you want to go and abuse me, uh, go wank into a sock. I'm sure your mum can make your dinner for you later as well. Uh, I'm going to go out now. Uh, because it's Boxing Day, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I I do what most grand men do, and I chat with girls, and usually be successful. Uh, but other than that, guys, listen, make sure you subscribe to One Hundred Percent Chelsea. Also, there's a link down in the description: Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Before we go, further, go on. What's One Hundred Percent Chelsea got planned for two thousand and nineteen? Oh well. <laughs> there's that's throwing you under the bus. Oh, too. you're not throwing me under the bus. I tell you what, cause that's <laughs> literally, literally today, I have bought some podcast in mind. I know. <laughs> so, guess what? We're going to be doing in 2019, bitches. We're going to have a podcast. Yeah. You'll have South Boss's Corner's podcast. You'll be able to have a 100% Chelsea podcast. We'll think about calling it Blue Balls uh, because, you know, there's there's two meanings to that. But at the same time, you know, listen, if your wife can't or your missus can't get you off, don't worry, lads. We'll get you off, obviously, not t- talking about football, not talking about other stuff. And we will be talking about general shit, but uh, we won't be doing phone sex. So, uh, if you want that, head across the Babe station or any of those other premium lines uh, because that made, to, be, to be honest, if, if, we, if we were going to call it Blue Balls and we're going to do phone sex, I'd want to make money off of it because it's, it's as simple as that. It's a money-making game. It's numbers. But at the same time, listen, we'll, we'll move on from that. We've got the podcast. We've got Sad Bastard's Corner improving. We've got fan cams. We've got all that beautiful stuff lined up for 2019. I'm excited. Dom's You've excited. Got the sexiest excited. On YouTube. Uh, what now? You've got the Sexiest attitude editor on YouTube. Um, I mean, Sammy's not that great. <laughs> oh, 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 well, uh, yeah, he used to be our editor. He went elsewhere. But other than that, guys, listen, make sure to subscribe to Twenty Percent Chelsea to find out all that beautiful stuff from 2019. Uh, obviously, hit the that subscribe button if you want to see what's going on. Hit that notification bell so you know when that beautiful stuff comes out. And obviously, make sure as soon as this finishes, you watch Lawrence's review, which is literally going to be going live five minutes after this but listen other than that guys subscribe follow dom follow me follow the channel on everything thank you so thank you for your support in 2018 i will be doing a new year's eve address that has to be sent uh we, have, we will do it and there's gonna be a place with the best of 2018 we might even put a little video together if uh, if dom's up to the challenge uh but that's his call to be honest uh but listen listen guys thank you for watching take care thank you dom for coming on and we'll see you later Ta-ra.